So this is the problem about committing to uploading a video once a week on a regular basis. I've got to have a project made, filmed, edited, and uploaded to this channel every single Friday. Now this particular week, I was just sitting around thinking, oh, something will come to me. Oh, I'll just wait on a Tuesday and then Wednesday. Oh, something will happen on Thursday. Uh... Tomorrow I'm supposed to upload a video. Chances are I've done something mediocrely okay and you guys are watching it right now. What I think I'm going to do is a dust collection setup for my mini lathe. Now this one requires a backstory. I was looking at other dust collection setups for my big lathe because I'm not happy with the one that I have. And it seems like all over the interwebs, the grapevines of Google, there are these weird things that go on mini lathes that collect dust and it's like a box with a glass screen to see through. And at first I thought, you know what, that's kind of stupid because that really takes away working space and you're going to have to work around that. But as I'm thinking about it, I'm like, you know what, that's not a bad idea for my mini lathe because all I ever turn on there is pens and that type of thing. I'm not turning bowls or anything. And like I mentioned, I don't have a video planned for this week, so this is either going to be the greatest thing yet or an utter disaster. Plexiglass, and I found these random hinges, and I have some three quarter inch plywood on hand. So I'm gonna build this with that material. And I also have this thing here. I don't know what this is for. It came with a dust collection kit, and I have never needed it for anything except for this day here. But it's basically a four inch fitting with a faceplate here. So this is what I'm gonna use to hook up to the setup. Setup, rig up, jig, riggy jiggy, setup, jiggy. I've done some really crude drawings of what I'm going to build so I have some sort of set of plans to go off of. And I'm going to start by ripping the pieces out of this three quarter inch plywood. and I decided to cut out this little tiny bit here to allow my tool rest uh, banjo to go in and out behind the back. I'm just going to cut that out with the bandsaw. and I need a cutout here so that they can slip over the centers of my lathe. The mini lathe is a 10 inch swing capacity, so dead center, I measured it, is five and an eighth. So that means I have to mark about five and an eighth up from the end of each board. I'll extend that with a speed square. Now I'm gonna drill out the inside corner of the cutout with a inch and five eighths inch forster bit. And I think I'm gonna bring this line back to somewhere about here, four and three eighths. that this is the shortest piece I can ever turn on this lathe if I were to stick with this length of a back. The problem I'm having is that the tailstock cannot move into this area even when the sides are installed, so I am limited to that length. So I suppose you could come up with some complicated way to make this adjustable, but I don't really have a lot of time right now. 
and I don't really do anything other than pen turning on this lathe. So I am going to measure the length of my pen mandrel and base the length of the box off of that. Which means that I have to recut this back piece as well as the pieces for the top frame. That's what I get for not carefully thinking through this. Just recut this piece. I can bring my tailstock through this way, so I think that will work out just fine. Now I'm going to give all the pieces a quick sand at my spindle sander. that four inch uh, dust collection fitting that I'm just gonna screw on here. I'm gonna center it up about here, and that is pretty close. Uh, I think I'm just gonna do something like that. All right, so all this stuff in here can all get cut out. Warning, this is not the greatest way to hog out this material. I am just going to try to clear as much of it out as I can with a Forstner bit, and after that, I'll clean it up on my spindle sander. I would normally use a jigsaw to do this kind of work because I don't make it a practice to make things a lot harder than they need to be. But my beloved jigsaw burnt out on me about a couple months ago and I've been procrastinating buying a new one. And this is what I get for that. So now I'm just going to take the very long and hard road to get this material out of there. Well that did not come out badly at all. So now what I'm going to do is start assembling this with wood glue and brad nails. These little pieces here are going to make up the frame and a small piece of plexiglass will be tacked over the top of this and this will be hinged onto the top of the box. This will go right on top of here. Glass that I just cut down and this is going to go on top of the frame that will be hinged to the top of the box. I'm going to secure it in with a self-drilling hex screw. <laughs> Setup. I just attached a 4 inch dust collector hose to that fitting in the back and connected that to my blast gate which hooks up to my 2 horsepower dust collector. See, so if I ever need to get in there, I just open up the hinge and I can do my thing and put it back down. And the plexiglass allows me to see while keeping a barrier here to shield some of the chips from getting thrown up into the air. I don't really feel the need to secure this thing anyhow because it sits flat and if it ever were to fall back it would get caught on the center so I'm not worried about it. But anyways I'm going to go turn on the dust collector and we'll see how this thing works.
Ooh. Is this possibly the solution to all your dust wood turning problems? You know what, I have to say, for sanding, I was impressed. All sanding dust went straight into the vacuum, nothing escaped, nothing drifted in the air for a little bit, it all went straight in there. And just for that, I think building this is totally worth it. For turning, it did actually catch a lot of the chips. I was surprised by the amount that it got. But you know what, with a lathe, I just don't think it's possible to contain the mess that it makes. On my bigger 16 inch lathe, something like this would never work out, it just makes too much of a mess. <laughs> Now I don't think I mentioned any kind of specific measurements of this thing in the video because I was just building this as I went, but it turned out being 8 inches tall, 6 inches deep, and 10 inches long. And I think everything else really isn't too hard to come up with, just make it to fit your own lathe and your own needs. Let me know what you guys think by commenting below, and I'd love to hear what your wood turning, dust catching solutions are. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, that way you'll be notified whenever I post a new video, and I will see you all next Friday.